The Story of Seasons series has been running since its first entry released on the Super Nintendo in 1996 in Japan, known as Bokujo Monogatari, Farm or Ranch Story in Japan, and published for many years in the West as Harvest Moon, before a change of Western publisher in 2014 saw the Western name change to Story of Seasons. Friends of Mineral Town was the first of the series to release for the Game Boy Advance, coming out in 2003 in Japan and the following year elsewhere. Now I put hundreds of hours into this game in its original form on the Game Boy Advance and at a time when I drifted away from gaming, this game got me back into it. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. It's now been remade with new 3D visuals and releases on the Nintendo Switch this week. Is this remake worth playing? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to Marvelous Europe for the review code and now let's find out. Story-wise, Friends of Mineral Town sees you as a city dweller inheriting your grandfather's old farm after he passes away. It's a place you visited as a child and have fond memories of, so decide to move to this small town and make a go of restoring the old farm to its former glory. In order to do this, you will need to tend to the land, clearing it of weeds, stones and branches before tilling the soil, all with tools that are provided to you at the start of the game. You will find there are a few bits early on that you can sell, such as grapes or honey, and you sell these by putting them into the shipping box, and this will give you enough money to go and buy seeds from the general store in town. After a few cycles of doing this, you will have a modest source of income, and thus start your journey to becoming a successful farmer. You will find yourself having to make a conscious effort to manage your stamina early on in the game, especially if you go big with how many crops you plant in that first season. Your stamina bar is located in the top left corner of the screen, and I quite enjoyed the first few seasons being a struggle. It felt realistic to have to put some serious hours into the first few months, working late into the night to try and finish watering crops for example, and thus waking up with less stamina the next day, but then being rewarded with one final, bountiful harvest on the last day of the season, just before your crops would have withered and died. It gives an immense sense of satisfaction. There are ways to manage your stamina, such as a hot spring available for you to frequent, as well as there being a few bits around the farm, like the grapes I mentioned earlier, or blue grass that will earn you a small stamina boost. You can also buy meals from the shops in the town that will give you an even bigger boost, and as you get further into the game, you will be able to build a kitchen within your home, and from here you can cook dishes of your own, a huge additional part of the game. Another way to manage your stamina is to upgrade your tools. Using each tool will see your proficiency with it level up, although to actually upgrade it, you will need to visit the forge and pay the blacksmith as well as providing him with the necessary material that he needs to carry out the job. This leads to another big part of the game being mining. You have access to the mines straight away and will need your hammer and hoe in order to mine. Smashing rocks with the hammer has the potential to reveal ore, and tilling the ground will reveal a ladder when you hit the right point, allowing you to move deeper into the mine. The further you go, the more rare the ore or minerals you find will be. Again, your stamina will determine how far you can go down. Then of course you can purchase and raise animals on the farm, with there being the option of chickens, cows and sheep. You can of course sell the eggs, milk or wool they produce for more money. You can extend your farm by paying the carpenter to construct new buildings, again provided you give him the necessary materials. If you do find yourself needing additional help on your farm, you can go and visit the nature sprites. These live in the northeast corner of the town and once you befriend them you can ask them to help you on your farm in one of three areas, being watering crops, harvesting crops or attending to the livestock. You can play mini games with them to improve their skills with each job. The games are basic memory or rhythm games and do become pretty repetitive in all honesty. I found myself playing these a couple of times and then just letting the sprites learn on the job after that. Other aspects of the game include fishing as well as a number of different events that take place throughout the year. These include celebrations that can be attended, such as a fireworks night or the harvest festival, as well as competitions for your animals, such as horse racing or cooking and produce contests as well. These events do become quite samey as the years go on, but you don't have to participate in them if you don't want to. Another thing that I found weighed the game down a touch was that winter was a bit of a non-event compared to the other seasons. There isn't as much to do, understandably so, don't get me wrong, but it does make up a quarter of the game, and I never really looked forward to the winter months approaching. Finally, there is the relationship aspect. You can choose whether to play as a male or female at the start of the game, with a female farmer having been introduced in an updated version of this game, More Friends of Mineral Town, shortly after the original came out. Within the town, there are a number of eligible bachelors or bachelorettes for you to speak to and build a friendship with. There is the potential for this friendship to become a relationship, and it can even lead to marriage and children further down the line. 
Now back in the day it was always Karen that I went for and ultimately ended up marrying. I considered wooing another woman this time round but the lure of Karen was just too strong. Even if Rick was constantly trying his luck, I mean what's this fella's problem? Oh it's alright, it looks like he's cocked it up anyway. In all seriousness though, I do like that there appears to be potential budding romances within the town and your choices in terms of the character you pursue will of course have a major impact on one of these. The relationship building can be a little simple though these days, with you basically being asked a question whilst conversing and either agreeing with the person and thus them liking you more or not and your relationship not progressing. Perhaps a few more dialogue options could have been added to this new remake just to flesh this out a bit more and make it feel a bit more complex. Control wise you have two equipment sets, you have your tools on the bottom left of the screen and any other items or materials you have picked up on the bottom right. Selecting one of your tools is done by pressing left and right on the d-pad and you can move through your other items by moving the right stick to select the item you want. It's not terrible but it doesn't feel completely intuitive either. The d-pad for tools is actually pretty good but the right stick for items just felt a bit awkward. The shoulder buttons feel as if they would have been a better fit. You can use Y to use a tool and A to interact with something such as harvesting a crop. I got these the wrong way round quite a few times at first, accidentally cutting down a crop in the process but you do get used to it after an hour or so. Gameplay is simple, not having the huge story segments that later farm life sims would have added or the combat of games such as the Rune Factory series but feels refreshingly satisfying because of this, almost like doing an honest day's work and it scores 18 out of 20. Controls don't feel as comfortable as they could have although you do get used to them relatively quickly and they score 14 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, this remake replaces the original game's pixel art look with 3D character models and backgrounds. In my opinion, the results are rather mixed. On the positive side, the town itself looks vibrant, with a lovely use of colour really bringing things to life. The seasons all have a distinct look to them, with autumn looking particularly beautiful. Its oranges and burnt umbers really do stand out and give the season quite a majestic quality. A particular highlight was the coming of dusk. The day to night transition is handled brilliantly and seeing the town's street lamps turn on makes for quite a quaint atmosphere. What didn't come across quite so well in my opinion was the implementation of the newer 3D character models. They just look quite lifeless and feel like something that would have been the best the 3DS could do rather than something that showcases a Switch game. In some ways they make the game feel a bit more dated than the original pixel art which is unfortunate. As a whole the backgrounds and colours pull things through but I did find the character models very jarring to be honest. Performance wise Friends of Mineral Town runs at a consistent 30 frames per second. When it comes to audio, a great selection of tunes and melodies are used, each doing a good job of accentuating the key feelings for each season. You will listen to each tune for 30 in-game days before the season changes, but I never felt myself becoming fatigued with any of the songs at all. Plus the music changes when you leave your farm, which really helps with this, and the main theme which plays in the town has been stuck in my head since about 2004. There is no voice acting and there are no animated cutscenes, something that could have possibly been added to this remake as they were for Rune Factory 4 for example, but I don't think it makes a huge difference. As I mentioned in the gameplay section, I quite liked the simplicity of it all in this respect. Visuals don't quite capture the spirit of the original thanks to character models that seem just a bit soulless and scores 14 out of 20. Audio adds a warmth and charm to proceedings which works really well and they score 18 out of 20. Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town costs £42.99, $49 or Euros 99 or 79 Australian dollars 95 and whilst I know from experience that you can easily put hundreds of hours into this game as I did myself in its original form, plus for my personal tastes I prefer this over something like Stardew Valley as much as I enjoy that game too, but it is also four times the price of that game. The graphical overhaul the game has received is a bit hit and miss which again makes the price quite difficult to stomach. It is getting a physical release which I've seen advertised for pre-order for around £38 which is a little more palatable but on the whole value scores 14 out of 20. To conclude, Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town shows how great gameplay transcends across decades by playing just as well as it always did and for me is so simple and pure and free of a lot of the fluff that subsequent games concern themselves with that taken on its own merit is definitely still worthy of a purchase today. I don't think certain aspects of the new graphical style come off, almost dating the game more than the original, plus it's been priced too high as far as I'm concerned and these have obviously affected the score, but let me make this clear, this is still a fantastic game to this day and I loved every second of returning to Mineral Town.
story of seasons, Friends of Mineral Town gets a switch up score of 78%. Thank you as always everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed that review, please do remember to leave a like if you did. I am still struggling with my dental issue, hopefully I'm getting it fixed this week, and this is probably the hardest review I've ever had to record, because it's just got so many bloody S's in it. Hopefully it hasn't ruined your viewing experience too much. A big thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.